Hello there and welcome to the first farming forecast of spring. Before we take a look at the forecast, we're just going to take a quick look back at the amount of rainfall that we saw through February. So this comes on the back of a very dry January in which most places saw below average rainfall. But you can see this is quite a contrast to that. This is the rainfall anomaly through February as estimated by the radar. And much of the British Isles here is in those blue colours, so above average rainfall, particularly parts of northwest England, southern Scotland, around the Moray Firth, into parts of northwest Scotland and Northern Ireland as well. Some places there saw 300% or more of their normal average rainfall for February. So exceptionally wet, and that caused quite a bit of serious flooding in places courtesy of those three named storms we saw towards the end of February. Now this is in contrast to parts of southern England, which actually, despite those storms, did see rainfall below average by the end of the month. So a bit of a contrast there, but elsewhere it was an incredibly wet month. And the knock-on effect that that's had on the soil moisture you can see here as well. So when we started the month of February, many places were recording soils of very dry, so very dry soils to start the month. But after all that rain through February, by the end of the month, many places are now around normal or above average. The odd station or two, particularly in the south, is still below average, as it was a little bit dry there. But elsewhere, a lot of those stations are recording above average soil moisture. So back to something a little bit more normal or above average by the end of the month. So taking a look at the forecast over the next few days, this is the jet stream and it's going to be quite amplified over the UK over the next few days as we've got this big area of high pressure out to the east of the British Isles. We've got a fairly, fairly active jet stream across the North Atlantic, but as that moves eastwards and encounters that area of high pressure, uh, known as a block, it's going to move to the north, go around the top of it and back down to the south again. So it's pushing areas of low pressure into the west, but a lot of them are going to struggle to make their way eastwards across the British Isles and actually move northwards and bring a lot of rain to Western Britain, but Eastern Britain is going to be relatively dry closer to that area of high pressure as those uh, areas of low pressure struggle to make their way eastwards across. So looking at the forecast in a little bit more detail, this is through Tuesday. We've got this broad area of high pressure out to the east, centered across Denmark and Germany, bringing this fairly dry southerly flow or southeasterly flow across eastern Britain. So pretty sunny for most places through Tuesday. It was a fairly pleasant day, but we've got these areas of low pressure out to the southwest that have been pushing rain north eastwards through the day on Tuesday. And you can see that's going to continue through the afternoon and overnight. We see some showery rain in central parts before that weakens overnight and into Wednesday ahead of this next more active front pushing through and some heavier rain then pushing into parts of Ireland and western Scotland. So there might be one or two showers in eastern England overnight, but generally it will be that little bit drier. Most places will be frost free as well with quite a lot of cloud around. Wednesday itself is going to start mostly dry in the east, perhaps one or two showers from that weakening front, and there will be a fair bit more cloud around than on Tuesday when it was near and broken sunshine for many places. But generally dry in the east, it's going to be quite mild as well in this southerly flow, highs of 12 or 13 degrees, particularly in eastern England. But further west, we've got this band of rain coming through, and that's going to continue to move slowly eastwards over the course of Wednesday, bringing some fairly heavy rain to parts of western Britain, perhaps some snow on its back edge as well, as it does introduce some quite chilly air uh, to the uh, to the west but as we get into Thursday morning that front's generally weakening it stalls across central parts and that rain begins to turn a fair bit patchier so actually to the east of that across East Anglia and the southeast there may be one or two showers if that rain just nudges further east but generally it will be on the drier side we've got this cloud and patchy rain in central parts and then turning dry with some sunny spells towards the end of uh, the day on Wednesday and overnight into Thursday, some clear skies leading to the risk of a frost fairly widely by Thursday morning in the north and west. So to start the day on Thursday, we've got the remnants of this frontal system across central Britain. To the west out in the Atlantic, we've got this broad area of low pressure, some pretty heavy rain here on its eastern edge, but that's going to stay away to the west for the time being. And actually through Thursday, what we're going to see is this front begin to continue to weaken, bringing a few bits and pieces of patchy rain, a few showers, but generally many places will see some dry weather, some sunny spells. In that sunshine, it will feel fairly warm, temperatures getting up into the mid-teens, before then we do finally see that next band of rain move into Western Ireland um, and into parts of Southwest England, parts of South Wales as well. So that by the end of Thursday, but like I say, for, for eastern areas, a few bits of patchy rain, fairly mild though, here are the temperatures. Some models indicating we could see temperatures of 15, 16, perhaps 17 
very locally, perhaps not quite as widespread as this graphic here is suggesting, but especially in the sunshine, you know, it could get temperatures up into the mid-teens. Other models, not quite as warm, but still fairly widely, temperatures between 12 and 13 or 14 degrees on Thursday. So a very mild day, um, and for many, it won't be too bad in terms of rainfall as well. It will be on the drier side. Now, towards the end of the weekend for Friday, what we see is we've got this band of rain here out to the west. Ahead of that, there could be a few showers and potentially a few sharp showers as well, just on the remnants of that frontal boundary. But for many, it will be a dry start to Thursday, generally frost free, a lot of cloud around uh, temperatures uh, not falling to close to zero. So a generally frost free start. But we do see then this band of rain push eastwards over the course of Friday, becoming a little bit more widespread. That's followed by a scattering of showers, which tend to weaken into Saturday before then this next area of low pressure pushes in from the southwest, bringing some heavier areas of rain to Ireland, England and Wales. So a bit more of a mixed picture towards the end of the week. Friday is probably when eastern Britain sees most of its rain of that initial front that moves through from the west, but you can see there's obviously further rain into western Britain as well. Now into Sunday, that area of low pressure continues to move northwards. It encounters this high. So as I mentioned earlier, it struggles to move eastwards um, with this high pressure here fairly strong. So we do see it move out to the north. Some rain across eastern Britain, but a lot of rain and showers across the western half of the British Isles as well. And actually it stays relatively mild over the weekend too. Now in terms of rainfall, like I mentioned earlier, there's going to be a pretty sharp west-east contrast. Um, eastern parts, much of the rain for them falling on Friday, seeing around 5 to 10 mil in places, probably less in a few spots. Further west though, a lot of rain, these purple colours here, 60 to 70 mil or more over some of the high grounds of southwest England, south Wales, southwest Scotland, southern Ireland, with uh, a lot of that rain coming up from the south. So a very wet picture for parts of western British Isles, but a little bit drier further east. So with all this going on, the best way of staying on top of the forecast is to speak directly to one of our forecasters. They're available every day from 6 a.m. till 5.30 p.m. on the number shown on screen. And they can answer any questions you have regarding the forecast, any uncertainty in the forecast and any changes that happen over the next few days. So they're your best bet of staying on top of the forecast. Now into the early part of next week, what we see is this area of high pressure across Eastern Europe stays pretty strong and pretty well built. Um, we've got fronts moving to the northwest of the British Isles, but actually the high ridges into southern and eastern Britain. So a little bit drier for many places um, into the early part of next week. The most likely areas of seeing the rain are in the north and west. We do have this area of low pressure as well developing across Iberia, but that should stay away to the south. Um, so for many, it will be a slightly more settled period um, for the early part of next week. Now, looking beyond that through next week, this is the pressure anomaly uh, for that period. We've got a large pressure, positive pressure anomaly across Eastern Europe. So high pressure remaining strongly built for parts of Eastern Europe. We've got that low pressure down in Iberia. And then we've got low pressure out to the northwest. And the UK is kind of in this, this area between high pressure and settled conditions to the east and unsettled weather out to the west. So a few fronts are going to attempt to push eastwards across the British Isles. We might see some rain in the north and west. That's most likely of seeing the wetter weather. Further south and east though, more dominated by high pressure. So some drier conditions there. So you can see in terms of the rainfall anomaly, wetter than average in parts of Scotland and Ireland, but drier than average in England and Wales. Very dry across much of Europe with high pressure around. So well below average in terms of rainfall. But that area of low pressure down in Iberia might bring some pretty wet conditions um, above average rainfall down there. And generally, in terms of temperatures, it stays fairly mild across much of northern and western Europe. A strong signal for above average temperatures. But it stays a bit cooler in the south and east um, with some cooler air still residing over there. Now, into the following week, we still see this, uh, this uh, sign of high pressure out to the east persisting. So still fairly settled conditions across Eastern Europe and much of Western and Central Europe as well, to be honest. We still have a hint of low pressure down towards Iberia. And the UK is fairly similar to the previous week in the sense that Southern and Eastern parts are going to be influenced by this high pressure out to the east. But Northern and Western areas are going to see areas of low pressure try and push fronts through. So Southern and Eastern areas will likely see some rain as well. But overall, the rainfall will likely remain below average in the south and east and above average in the north and west. But elsewhere across Europe, still well below average, particularly further east. And as with the previous week, some above average rainfall across Iberia as well. 
Now into the following week, this is the last week of March and just into the first part of April, we do see that signal for high pressure across Eastern Europe begin to weaken a little bit. Generally, we've got a signal of higher than average pressure stretched across, across Southern Europe and lower than average pressure stretched across uh, Northern Europe. So areas of low pressure running here, but actually a little bit more settled in Southern parts. So to summarize, this week it's gonna be unsettled in the West with several rounds of rain pushing in off the Atlantic, but further east, it will be a little bit drier as high pressure out across Western Europe ridges in at times. For the rest of the month, it's likely that high pressure will dominate across Eastern Europe with areas of low pressure trying to move in off the Atlantic. So the west and north of the British Isles will see most of the rainfall, but it might be that bit more settled in the south and east. And for the rest of March, the signal is that generally temperatures are gonna remain above average, uh, so feeling mild at times. So thanks for watching this week's video. As ever, you can keep up to date with the day-to-day -day forecast for the British Isles and East Anglia on our social media. Thanks for watching.